Okay, so you want to customize Mistral running on Olama. So let's jump right into that. Now, if you haven't already, go ahead and navigate over to the Olama.com website and search for the Mistral model, and you should see this particular screen pop up here. And we're going to get some different information about the model here. When we scroll further down, we can get some information around the different flavors of this model. Now, there's two different versions. We can get the 8 by 22 billion parameter model or the 8 by 7 billion parameter model but we'll be using the smaller of the two models here and if you scroll down a little bit further we can see information around what is this model great at doing and we can see it's really focused on math and coding capabilities and it's multilingual one other thing to call out here it does have a one of the larger token context windows which is 64k tokens all right so now that you know how to find mistral within olama we're going to jump over into the terminal and run a couple of commands. Now, one thing to call out before we jump over into the terminal, if you're not super familiar with Olama, feel free to go down in the description. There's two links to two different videos, one for how to set up Olama on a Mac and one for how to set up Olama on Windows. All right, let's jump over into the terminal. OK, I've got terminal pull up here now, and I'm going to run a few Olama commands. Now, the first command that I'm going to run is Olama list list the models that I have installed here so far. And you can see I have a handful of models installed here, but the model that we want to install is going to be the Mistral model. So I'm going to run the next command, which is Olama pull. Now this will pull the model down onto my computer without actually running that particular model. So I'm going to type in Mistral, and then I am going to put a colon there, and I am going to do 8 by 7 b now that will pull that particular model down for me here onto my computer. All right, I'm gonna hit enter here and it's gonna take a little bit to download this model to my computer. So I'll hop back over to the terminal once we're done downloading this particular model. Okay, so we're back at the terminal here and we can see that the model has now been downloaded onto my computer. Now, if I were to run Olama list again, that should now show up in the list of models that I have here. So now we can see we have the Mistral 8 by 7 billion parameter model downloaded. So let's quickly run this just to make sure everything is functioning correctly. And I'm going to call Olama run and the name of the model. And then we'll let this model load here and we should be presented with a prompt so that we can send questions to that model. Okay, so we can see our model is now loaded and it's saying send me a message. So now we can prompt the model with specific question. So the first thing I'm going to do, just to make sure everything's functioning, I'm going to say, what is your name? And see what kind of output we get here. Now we can see the model generating output for us. And it's saying, I don't have a name. I'm just a helpful assistant. How can I assist you? So what we're going to do is now customize this model, give it a name, change some other different parameters that we would like to change, and then create our own model based on the Mistral model. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to jump over into Visual Studio to create our model file. OK, I've got VS Code pulled up here with my custom model file that I am going to be typing out here. You know, you could use text editor or whatever text editor of your choice. I'm using VS Code because it has a integrated terminal built into it. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do to start building out my custom model file is is I need to put a reference to the underlying base model that we are going to basically be inheriting from here. So the first thing I'm going to do is add from Mixtral colon 8 by 7 billion parameter model there. And that's just saying, hey, this is going to be our baseline model that we are going to use to customize here. So that's all that is here. Now, one thing to call out here, the from, it's not case sensitive. You can type that in all lowercase. That's just a convention that's used when creating your custom Olama model files. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is start adding in the different parameters that I'm going to need to customize my model. Now, the first parameter that I'm going to add is the temperature parameter here. And I am going to set this temperature to a value of one. Now, this is the highest value. It's usually a value between zero and one. So that's usually what the value is going to be for models. Now, setting a temperature of one makes that model more creative in its output there. So that's what we're gonna do there. And the next thing that I'm going to do is add the stop parameters that we need for this model. Now, each underlying model that is ran within Olama 
it's going to have its own set of stop parameters. Now I'm going to enter the stop parameters that are required for this particular Mistral model. Now let's hop over into the browser and show you where I got these parameters from. That way you know how to customize any other model that you're running within Olama. Okay, we're back in the browser here at the Olama website and looking at the Mistral model here. Now, how we go about getting the stop parameters is we go down to the model card section here and we click on the param section. Now we can see that there are two values in this list here for the stop parameters. And that's how you go about getting your stop parameters when you're customizing a model. You just copy and paste both of these values and then put them in your model file. So that's how you go about getting the stop parameters for a particular model on Olama. You can apply this to any other model that you're customizing. All right, let's jump back over into VS Code. Okay, we're back at VS Code and we now have an understanding of how we came about getting the stop parameters by looking at the model card on Olama. Now, we need to set up the template parameter here. Now, the template parameter controls the output of the response for the underlying model. Now, if you don't enter this correctly, you could get some weird output when you're prompting the model for questions. All right, so you can see that I've added this value here, it's template, and then we have this here as our model template. I'm gonna hop back over in the browser just to make sure everyone understands how to go about getting this value here. Okay, we've got the model file pulled back up here on olama.com, and we can go down here and we can see there's another section called template. Now I'm gonna click on that and we can see the template that is expected for this particular model here. So all I've done is copy this value here and I've added that to my model file. So hopefully you now have an understanding of how I got that particular parameter for our model file. So let's jump back over to VS Code. Okay, I'm back over in VS Code here in our model file and we're going to now set our last parameter here, which is going to be our system parameter. Now I'm gonna paste in the system parameter that I'm gonna be using and it just says, hey, you are Blue Cypher, a helpful AI assistant who can help with math and coding related questions. Now this system parameter allows you to steer the model in a certain direction in the way it replies. So we're gonna test it out and see how it replies back to us when we ask it its name. But before we test out our new model based on this new model file, I wanna show you how you can go about finding other parameters that you can customize here. So I'm gonna hop over into the Olama model file documentation and just briefly go over a couple other parameters that we could have set if we wanted to. So let's jump over into that documentation now. Okay, we're at the Olama model file documentation hosted here on GitHub. And I wanted to just show you the section that relates to the parameters here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click parameter and we can see the various other parameters that we could have set here within our model file. Now I'll call out a couple of these that you may want to tweak based on your use case and needs. So for example, here, this num underscore CTX, allows you to increase or decrease the context window as it relates to the token. So it's gonna to really depend on your use case whether you wanna increase this or not. And then you've got some other things within here that we've already set as it relates to the different parameters. We can see the temperature parameter and the stop parameter, but we could also set things like top K and top P if we wanted to tweak these things. So I wanted to give you an idea of how you could go about finding other parameters that you could have tweaked in your custom model file. So let's jump back over into VS Code and actually create our custom model based on our model file that we've now created. Okay, I'm back at VS Code and I have my model file pulled up here. Now we have completely created our custom model file that we can use to actually create our own version of Mistral based on the parameters we have set here. Now, one thing to call out, I call my model file custom dash Mistral. You can name this whatever you want, but you will have to make sure that you're referring it to the correct model file name when we run the next command to create our custom model. So let's jump over into the terminal and actually create our new Mistral model. Okay, I'm back in the terminal here and I've navigated to the directory where my model file exists. So be sure you're navigated to that directory so you can follow this step by step here. And you can see also the list of models that I have printed out on the screen. 
Now, the next command that I'm going to call is olama create, and that allows us to create a custom model. And next, I need to give my model a name. I'm going to call my model my dash minstrel colon 8 by 7 b And next, I need to reference my model file. So you're going to type in dash F for the reference to your model file. And the model file that I had was called custom dash minstrel. And next, I am going to hit enter. And this ran pretty quickly on my computer here. So you can see it transferred the model, read the model metadata, created the template system parameters and other relevant information that it needs to transfer into our new model and then created our layers. Now, if I run olama list, actually let's clear the screen here and run olama list. And you can now see that there's a new model that shows up here called my dash minstrel colon eight by seven B. So our model has officially been created and now we can use that model. So in order to use the model, remember we're gonna type in olama run so we can run the model and then just put in the name of whatever you named your new custom model and we'll hit enter here and let that load. Okay, so our model has now loaded for us and it's presented us with the prompt to send it a message. So the first question I'm going to ask, because if you recall previously, we asked the model its name and it didn't have a name. So let's say, what is your name? And see if our new system parameter takes effect. So let's see what the output is. So it says, hello there. I am indeed here to assist you with math and coding related questions. You can think of me as Blue Cipher. If you recall, we named the model Blue Cipher here. And it says, I'm a helpful AI assist. So now we can see that our new custom model accounts for the parameters that we have set in it. For example, the system prompt where we gave the model an underlying name. Now you may be asking yourself, great, how can I use this model in an application? Feel free to check out the two videos that show up on the screen on how you could go about integrating your very own models within Olama within your own chat application. So again, thanks for checking out the video. Hope you liked it. If you like the content, feel free to like and subscribe. I try to put out content like this on a weekly basis. Again, thanks for watching and have a great day.